All right, check, check, check one, check two, check three. This is it. Welcome to the Cannabis Coffee Hour with your host, me, Rob Cantrell, coming to you live and direct from Brooklyn, New York on a beautiful Friday. Slight delay. I try to get it out on Thursday, but what can you do? Life moves, time goes, boom, bip. But we're on it. You know, I'm not a perfect dude, but I try to hit the mark when I can hit the mark. And I just love doing this podcast. I love that you're tuning in. I love the last episode. I see the numbers going up. People digging this show. You know, it's got a whole different flow. We're talking positive vibes, sunlight, universe, nature. Humor, comedy, cannabis, coffee. Uh, today, everybody, welcome to the Cannabis Coffee Hour. Thank you for tuning into the podcast. Uh, today's episode, I got a special batch. I've been making my own moonshine cannabis tea, actually. Um, I had a big bag of from Lancashire. Uh, my boy, Caleb hooked me up with a big fat bag of uh, hemp, like hemp, hemp for tea. And I had one of those old school like iced tea makers where it, it has a filter in it and it's just a big jug. And and I've been eyeing this up for a while. I wanted to, I've been smoking heavy, heavy, you know, in the la- <laughs> I had Benson on the last podcast and that was a bonged out episode for sure. This one, you know, I'm just doing a tea spritzer a homemade tea spritzer i don't know if that's what you call it i don't know but i don't know about the name spritzer that's too many spits going on but no it's just a good batch of hemp and honey tea i had this like big block of like honeycomb but the honeycomb the honey kind of got granulated i hate when honey gets all like granulated i like honey when it's flowing and soft but I always like chewing honeycomb. Like I do think, I think honeycomb has got like the real honeycomb, like the like 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 the shit that tastes like wax. Like that shit is good for your body. It's got certain crazy enzymes for your joints and shit. I just can tell. I could just tell. Um, I gotta give a shout out to my mom. My mom was always about uh, brown bread and eating honey and vitamin c and oranges and there was a she had no problem she always stressed reading and always stressed eating good food and i hated it when i was little i fucking all i wanted to watch was go bots and eat fucking count chocolate and i couldn't um but now that i'm older i'm like thank god because i got the knowledge and you know a lot of the game as you get older, is just making sure that the machine that you've been given in this universe, which is your body, is, you know, running on a top tip plane, you know? And a lot of that has to do with what you consume, meaning food. And, you know, I think a lot of it's media and food is what I've been kind of keeping my mind and eye on a little bit and monitoring it and seeing you know, some of the shit that's happened to my vibe, doing a general vibe check. But uh, no, this this tea, I made this tea, it took a day. So I put a big, it was like this old school like iced tea, just a, you know, a plastic jug, but it had like a built-in filter that had like a screen type joint going on in it. So it kind of has a built-in tea pot in the bot- top of it. And I just packed it full of hemp. And then I put a half a lime. No, I chopped up. I had a sliver of lime. And then I put a big thing of honeycomb. And then I put some mint in there. And then I put some black tea in there. And then I put some green tea. I just made a smorgasbord. I pretty much did the suicide of teas and hemp and honey. But 
Then I put it in this jug and then I put it out in the sun. And we had some really good sunny days in Brooklyn and I put it right I put it right into the fucking sun and the sun was just cooking up this tea and it just had limes and and lemons and real limes. I cut I got I got a lime, I got a lemon and I got a piece of raw ginger. Literally less than a dollar. I got a fresh lime, just fucking green, popping green. And then I got a fresh lemon. And then I got a hunk of ginger. And I chopped that shit up. Well, I didn't even chop the ginger up. I used like this, uh, I think it's for Parmesan cheese and shit, like a grater. And I just grated it into that tea thing. So it's ginger. It's lemons. It's lime. It's cannabis. It's uh, green tea and black tea and mint. And then it's soaked in the sun and has a ton. And I put all this, like I just put a big thing of honeycomb at the bottom of it. So it all kind of melted. But then I even, like, because it got chunky and there's like weird pulp and like wax and shit. So I didn't want to drink that. So I just got a strainer and then I poured it all into a mason jar. After it was sitting in this, I pour, poured that into a mason jar and I put another slice of lemon and then I put a little bag of green tea in that and then I put it in the refrigerator. So I just got this mason jar of liquid gold, liquid gold, liquid cannabis gold. And the thing is, I did run out of weed this week. It was weird. I ran out of weed. It happens. I had some. And then it goes away. And that's the, man, New York needs to get some dispensaries because I don't need a lot of weed. I just need a little bit of weed sometimes, a lot of times. <laughs> I don't need a lot of weed. I just need a little weed a lot of times. Mm. Drink it down this liquid gold. But, you know, I have to say that cannabis is somewhat of a vice, I would say. But it's like, in life, you got to pick out your vices that kind of go with you. And drinking, I just found out by my mid 20s, I was just like, it just didn't even fucking work, man. It was just like, bummer. I like hanging out with my friends and I like the little boozy feeling and you pump up some music and you talk some shit for a minute. But after a few hours, your head starts to bang and the conversation gets weird and uh, you should have broke out like two hours ago. But cannabis, I always like would smoke and then watch a movie and fall asleep. And uh, those are good things. I always, man, I took a nap right before I was, I've been having a good day. The family's out of town. I got the place to myself and I ran out of weed. So I made up some hemp tea, um, which is cool. But I have been like waking up and like literally like today, been waking up. I've been just trying to clean my mind like. I do think meditation in Western, I think, American society, and I love, don't ever get it twisted. I, I love America. Fucking Cantrells were on the Mayflower. Don't ever fucking test my Americanness. Uh, I went to high school football games in Southern Virginia in the 80s and played, you know, went to RFK. I saw Danny White get knocked out from the Cowboys. Dexter Manley knocked him out, and I was in the stands. That's some hardcore Washington, D.C., old school Redskins. You have to be like 50-year-old <laughs> to understand that reference. But if you did understand it, you'll know that the credentials are pretty fucking, uh, you know. I don't even know. Sometimes that whole, like, I like to rep D.C. and I like to rep Virginia. But at the same time, a lot of that is your ego and your story. And really, these are just concepts. That's what I'm feeling with meditation. Even businesses, even governments, a lot of them are just concepts um, in the mind. And the real thing is just living creatures and life and breathing air and trees and bugs and vultures and lions and sharks and human beings. Who the hell is calling me that? You know when it's kind of looks like your number? You know, dude, that dude hung up. He, I think he felt, because I'll chew somebody out if they're throwing some fake shit at me. I'll just get on the phone and really fuck with them. Um, even if it is a recording, I'll sit there and yell 
at the fake uh, phone call that's trying to say, do you own a house? We saw that your insurance thing has run out. You don't, I don't even have a car and you're calling me about this shit. You know what I'm saying? Just like this telemarketing via the cell phone, like these rando calls are just fucking whack. Um, and you just know them. They, they come at a certain time of the day. They have a certain number that's so whack. And sometimes you just push the button and then you're like, I just know it. But sometimes you're lonely. <laughs> that's what they're changing. That's what they're, uh, that's, that's what that whole schism, the whole call calling thing is, is just like one out of 10, somebody's lonely and is going to talk to you about insurance. And usually those people are old and, really lonely and don't really have the mind and then people fucking scam them i don't know i don't know where that diatribe's going um the phone call fucked me up no my mornings um just to go through my morning routine oh back to this uh, i just wanted to touch on the cannabis tea the cannabis tea yeah like right now i drank it and i was you know i was a little tingy like I could use some herb. I uh, wish there was some weed around. Started getting that way. But I'm learning that desiring things, that's the thing about meditation, like to let go of desire, um, that wanting, that neediness is just so fucking whack. And that energy, when you build it up, you know, has a vibe. And I do think it blocks, I think a lot of like, maybe the wheels I've been spinning in my comedy career, you know, is a lot about that neediness or just that desire, but you want to win and you want to get up and, you know, it's just fucking, you gotta, you, you gotta let the karma come back, you know, and it always does. It always does if you're really still. So I've been really gentle, like, my vibe is very loud, and I'm not aggressive, but I was the youngest in the family, my brother's like, like, almost like a marine in terms of fucking discipline and sports and shit, like, uh, and my sister's very hard and intelligent, like, you know, bullshit just wasn't accepted at the table, like, and I'm not saying bullshit, it was just like, you couldn't be fake or you couldn't like cheesy shit, not that it, but it gave me a good sense of like, what really is real, I don't know, I don't know where I'm going with that, maybe, maybe there's something there, but I don't know, I think just trying to settle my mind, and settle my soul, get to my root chakra, (laughs) at the bottom of your ass, Uh, no, it's just more of like a grounding feeling, like, Once you're grounded, like in meditation, it's like you're trying to get to a point to let the mud settle and just let everything settle and then work from a natural space. And that's kind of the Lao Tzu um, Taoism is just more of working from a natural space. And I do feel it works, you know? And if I sit back, and I just listen to myself, and everything is telling me I'm doing everything right right now, but I do need to keep doing the podcast, I do need to be shouting on the hills that cannabis, I really think cannabis has saved me a lot of years, like I look in the mirror and I'm like, I, this table last night, I was doing all these references, uh, you know, there was like Eagles references. It was like 80s music references. And this table was eating it up, right? And I could tell they were like born. I was doing stand-up. I was at a club. Shout out the Eastville Comedy Club in, uh, on Atlantic Avenue. They're a good club. They're getting it. Comedy clubs are weird with the spot stuff in New York. So there's a lot of like, but I have to say that's that I can't. When they were in Manhattan, I don't know. It was a little bit all over the map, but I like the Eastville Comedy Club. I can't say anything. I like the Eastville Comedy Club. They they work me, and I like that they're in Brooklyn. So I've been doing spots over there. If you want to see me just, like, run spots, check out over there. I do that. 
But I'm also doing the Bell House, which I'm really excited about with Joe Para and my man Dan Licata, uh, who's a writer for SNL. And Joe has his own show on Adult Swim. Those cats are fucking hilarious. And they're very DIY, very punk rock. You might call them hipsters or whatever, but they're not. They just fucking get that you don't have to buy into the full system to make your own shit. And the most powerful thing in all entertainment is making something out of nothing. And when you and that's where I'm at. I'm trying to make something out of nothing. And this podcast came out of nothing. This podcast came out of I had an extra lavalier mic when I finished uh, shooting a film series with my boy Mookie Thompson called PMA, which is on my YouTube account. Check it out. I'm proud of that work. Um, I did some directing. I did some acting. Did some vibing on absolutely no budget and about a half a bowl of resin. We made about seven short films that I'm proud of. Oh, yeah. So this hemp tea tastes, this tastes better than anything I've bought. Um, You know why? Because it's sweetened with that honey. That honey like got in there overnight. And it's, I mean, even if I didn't have the hemp in there um, or the tea, like it would taste pretty sweet. It just tastes good sweet water, but it's honey. It's not pure sugar. I don't know. I know people wig out about sugar. Like, I don't put white sugar. I'm not dumping sugar. I definitely don't put it in my coffee. I'm a oat milk, but I'll, I'll use whatever's laying around. Um, a lot of my stuff. Like, I like things, but I'm very versatile within that thing. Same thing with comedy and entertainment. Like, I could do these alternative rooms. I could do these mainstream club rooms. I can do your weird fucking... Uh, rock concert you know i've you know i've delved in all different types of universes and vibes and going to new places and feeling new vibes is one of the things that's the most interesting i would say that's the closest if if you've ever tripped acid um i haven't tripped that much i haven't tripped in a while but <laughs> there seems to be a lot of acid around <clears throat> i'm getting offered acid a lot but i, I gotta wait until I got a couple things in place. I think I could do it now because I've been meditating so hard and I know how to clear my mind and I understand about, I can't, you can't get a cocky with it, but I don't want to end up eating a bunch of acid and then swallowing my foot or something. And that, and then that's in the fucking, I don't know if I would make the news, but I bet if I died by swallowing my foot on acid, just even, even with my low numbers on social media, it would still make the papers because that's a pretty wild way to go out. Hmm. Oh, man. So I'm just jugging this tea. It is going by too fast. I'm a little worried. I'm, I'm definitely going to have to take a pee. Um, like in probably 10 to 15 minutes. But sometimes I've been learning to regulate, regulate my body when I feel these things come on a little bit more. And it's helped with meditation. I'm like, Cause I've been stuck in the car and bridges and, and had a, and I pound so much iced coffee all the time that I'm always looking for pee spots, <laughs> but I have been able to quiet when, when that like urgency comes on, I've learned to like turn towards the urgency in my mind and like quiet it down. And that's been a lot with meditation and a lot of meditation is just getting used to going inward. And that's why I like turning music off. I read like a couple things in a book. I got this Tibetan book. And then I got some other self helpy books. I even, you know what's a really cool book Book is uh, John Waters, Make Trouble. That's a really simple coffee tip. But my cousin got that for me. Uh, shout out Dave. You're the man, dude. Um, he got that John Waters. You know, he likes freaky art. He's a cool cat. He's out there. And um, he got this John Waters book, but that guy fucking went through hell and back in terms of like, I remember in the 80s, like he made a movie where a girl ate like live dog doo-doo and it was just like very avant-garde, you know, Andy Warhol on super acid. It was out there. But he also had a little like tongue-in-cheek 
something about these people from Baltimore. They do have a, a funky, cool sense of humor. Um, a lot of them. I've always, I've always enjoyed uh, Baltimore Cat. DC and Baltimore definitely has. I, I'm now I'm fucking shouting out areas, but they also ha- have a lot of funny, cool people. But also have a lot of rednecks and weirdos and uh, khaki pants type shit. Um, everybody cool. Everybody cool. Uh, you know who's super cool who I've been getting very inspired. I know I've given him lots of shout out and I tweet. You could check out my Twitter at Rob Cantrell, but I just tweeted uh, Cool Keith. Uh, this one, man, Cool Keith. I don't know if you, I know everybody likes mf doom these are like these really abstract la- rappers there's like mf doom um and then there is mf doom and then there's this guy bus drivers another dude but cool keith was before all of them he was in the ultramagnetic mcs who had a couple people from stetsasonic and stetsasonic was like Stetsasonic was like, like right, they were like right after Run DMC or right around that time, but they have some amazing tunes. Like that first Stetsasonic album is sick. Like that A F R I C K Angola, Soweto, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Zambia, Mozambique, Botswana. Let us speak about the motherlands because of the motherland. That's a song called Africa from Stetsasonic. And I just know all the lyrics. So I know those countries in Africa. (laughs) And that's from going from a little redneck kid from D.C. and Virginia. I have that imprinted on my brain because of these, you know, super dope uh, New York uh, MCs from the original source of hip hop, which is what, you know, a lot of my vibe is about you know whatever i get you know the type of shit that inspires me cool keith inspires me bismarcky inspires me i like weird funky out of the box but at the same time with that weird funky trippy you know you don't want to get so far out there or do i don't like weird for the sake of being weird i like weird if you're authentically weird and cool Keith, man, just the fucking, you know, give the man the roses in terms of rap, like in terms of rapping, in terms of lyrics, like I'm not a great rap. I mean, I'm okay, but I can do it and I've done it and I'll stand by some of my rhymes, not all of them, but I could catch a flow and ride a beat and it does take skill and it takes amount of creativity and it also takes some gumption. And Cool Keith has got this shit, like, ridiculous. It just pours out of him. And I don't know. He's a South Bronx dude. I don't... Dudes... Dude... People from the Bronx definitely understand, like, the core elements of hip-hop. And one of the core elements of hip-hop is just not acting like everybody else. Like, if you were a breakdancer, you couldn't look like somebody else or everybody clowned you. Like, you had to have your own super fresh, dope style. And, uh... That's what I'm working on. A cool Keith. But man, he has like all these wild projects that are out there. The one I've been digging is called Let's Celebrate Drugs. Google that. It's literally like a sample of Cool and the Gang's celebration. Celebrate good times. Come on. Let's celebrate. But then Cool Keith, it's like chopped up and then he does... He does all these rhymes about all this grimy, like, backstage, you know, stuff and, like, where the head's at. It's just fucking genius, man. It is. It's genius, but there's a dark side to it. But there's a truthness to it that, man, it's it's funky. Uh, So, yeah, a lot... I've been thinking about the ego. Yeah, the thing about rapping, it's just super ego. A lot of it's just like, yo, me, me, look at me. 
I'm me, and I make money. I got some money. I have sex. I eat food. Now, let's say that again. Let's say that again. Oh, by the way, I enjoy shooting people. I don't know when this killing thing started happening. I understand again, gangster rap. I guess it's Cowboys movies and... You know, I liked NWA. I definitely like Express Yourself. That's one of the NW, one of my favorite NWA songs, and that's a sick sample, but Dr. Dre just cuts the sample so well. And the lyrics and the song. And the crazy thing is like Dr. Dre in if you want to go listen to Express Yourself by NWA, it's the funkiest beat ever. I don't know about ever, but you know what I'm saying. It's it's funky. And he goes, I don't, Dr. Dre, and this is the dude that ends up making the chronic. I don't smoke weed or cest because it's known to give a brother brain damage. And brain damage on the mic don't manage nothing but making a sucker and you equal. So don't be another sequel. Express yourself. And then he goes on and makes the chronic 10 years later. <laughs> so that's when I, you know, and that's a dope album. And uh, so that's where I'm at with like, preaching like sometimes i get on my high horse because i'm mostly just trying to psych myself up and uh but judgment lately I, with meditation like if i look at a cat i'm like oh this motherfucker like you know i do have a very judgy voice inside of me and i'm now i'm seeing it and when it pops up i know it's not really me that's my ego and i'm just like oh that's a judgment he's just some fucking piece of fruit you know everybody's just this everybody's this organic matter you know and we are lucky as humans that we get to almost look at it and process it and understand it and keep understanding it and that's what makes us different than the animals like we're part of the nature system but because we have brains and communication we can contemplate why and we can t contemplate looking at it and examining it and working with it. That's where a lot of meditation has been helping me too is, uh, is l examining the dark or the dark thoughts a little bit more. Like if they're coming up, why is that there? Instead of just going positive, I gotta be positive, all day positive. Like now I'm like, okay, that's a thought. Okay, why is that thought there? And then I kind of, try to do a 360 on the source of the thought and uh, that took me a long time to get there because you're so you're always i think in american culture or what is it uh western society your thoughts are everything everything's uh, you know this grandiosa must go for my dream and there's my dream and this is our family and this is our country but these are all concepts in the world of nature in the world of nature, we're just a part of the trees. We're part of the ground. We're growing. It's just like, you know, you see a piece of ivy growing. We're that, but we have these super brains that we can look at this stuff and develop and make spaceships and drive fucking Teslas and shit like that, you know? So with meditation, it's like the idea of nirvana is to let go of everything, you know? And... And by that, you get everything. By letting go of everything, you get everything. And that's kind of, I'm just trying to let go of even my starting point, who I am, and I'm from D.C., I'm from G I talk all this shit. And I'm, you know, I'm really just a fucking, you know, piece of flesh flying through space, a bag of water. I say it on my album, a bag of water flying through fucking space. I'm a bag of cannabis tea flying through fucking space, you know, analyzing this and adjusting this. And what I've learned is that you got to get a lot of lotion <laughs> and you got to, because your, because your bag of water is going to dry. The, it's going to get leathery. So you got to just stay lubed up. It's all about lube. Got to stay, uh, or, you know, I'm just saying, stay fresh, stay uh, ointment. Just saying, you know, respecting the case the casing that we're in the human body is the casing you know i definitely believe the body is the temple you know church and all that you know big steeples and oh i built this the whole concept of building churches like 
okay, I built these big steeples. I built these churches. Oh, Jesus is going to love this. He's going to have so much real estate when he comes back. He's going to have so many different offices around. <laughs> like, no, it's in your heart, man. That You know, you got to look inside. Go inside. So when I meditate, I've been focusing literally like, you know how you can put your attention on a spot? You know, let's say it's like you could put, okay, I'm pointing at this bottle over there. And now I'm focusing on it. Not even looking, you know. It's just more of my mind is on it. Try to do that in your heart. Try to go way deep in your heart when you meditate. That's what I've been doing. Little bit sitting cross legged, trying to get my posture right, trying to line up my back that it's kind of lines up like almost like and then my head's on top almost like when you go on this just happened a few years or maybe i never noticed when people stack rocks have you ever seen that like on hiking trails they they kind of balance these rocks and that's kind of your spine to your head like that's how i kind of look at it i'm trying to get it to a point where you know everybody's like oh standing up straight is hard but if you're perfectly straight and rooted the idea is that it just sits there you know, and it's just balanced and you're not forcing it. You're just there. So that's, that's when your brain is level. And then I close my eyes and I breathe in and I actually picture the air going through my nostrils and I feel it. And then I feel it into my lungs. I read this book about how we're not breathing. Like pe- a lot of people, you got to breathe through your stomach. You got to get air into your stomach. You got a lot of people are just full of so much neurosis, as I was, hunkered over, fear, wigged out about bills. I mean, I'm still wigged out about bills. <laughs> you know, those things are coming. But I have been on this ride for a while, and I have seen it squeeze me good. But you know that that moment of Um, now I'm sounding like Biden doing the, let me see, <laughs> doing the whisper sound by the yin and yang twins. But I, that is, whispering on mic is one of the funnest things to do. Let me tell you something. Because you are amplified, and you, but you, well, listen here. And then people, by talking softer, they have to focus harder on your words. That is a, like, one of the, in stand-up comedy, if you want to talk, Jerry Seinfeld, you know, one of the greats, but, uh, and he is definitely, but one of the things I learned with him with heckling is there is a technique you can just shut up, like as the comic, you just stop the show and just listen to whoever's talking the shit. And by being quiet, <clears throat> being quiet, you can focus the attention. You can focus the attention by being loud, and you can focus the attention by being quiet. And ride in that wave, you know? If you're monotone, it it drones. But if you bring it up, then bring it down, you know? It's fun. Uh, So yeah, this morning, I meditated 40 minutes. I, but I don't want to be proud about all this shit. Like, a lot of it is not religious or spiritual or anything. It's more or less just, like, quieting all the ball of confusion that life is right now. And the media, I mean, I don't get into politics, but, yeah, Delta's firing back up. I think I'm vaccinated. I'm just done with fucking... I want to be done with this COVID shit so I can pursue my dream and my happiness. I want to hike. I want to snowboard. I want to fucking go to the beach. I want to do comedy shows. I want to smoke mad weed with my friends afterwards. I want to drive and listen to some cool tunes. I want to go eat a sandwich that I love. I want to do all those things and these fucking Delta variants and all this Trump fucking, I don't know, man. I can't, I I don't want to be blind to the fact that, you know, liberals do some bullshit too. All of it. You know what it 
it bums me out that there's a versus mentality in that we can't even see beyond the versus mentality. Versus, meaning black versus white, a Christian versus Jewish, uh, evil versus good. None of it. None of it. These are all concepts. The only thing that is true is this moment. Is this is right there. Uh, oh, that's true. The rest of it is just concepts. It's thought concepts. Thought concepts by human beings. You talk to an animal, there's nothing there. You talk to a star in the sky, that, they don't know what Republican, <laughs> it doesn't even, oh, Democrat, you know? But I do believe in goodness, and we have to go towards, uh, I don't know, we, I need me. Me. I, I do have a dark, I mean, I like dark shit. Like, I love Bill Hicks. Love angry Bill Hicks. Love Richard Pryor. Love it. Love it. Even some of the, you know, crazy, you know, uh, a lot of, Kevin Brennan is a, one of the fucking most negative comedians out there. But I love that dude. He's always been nice to me. Uh, some of the shit he's been saying, I don't know, it's shock value. A lot of that shit is like the shock jock 90s extreme art type fucking shit is just kind of played these days. But some of those cats are just fucking great comics and cool cats. So I'm just trying to work away from a versus mentality, but it does anger me. September or uh, January 6th bums me the fuck out. That bums me out, man. It's just people fucking got sucked into their fucking computers and love the anger. Anger, it's a drug. It's adrenaline. A lot of it's adrenaline. A lot of my stand-up that I love, I still get giddy with stand-up. But I think a lot of it's just I really love the adrenaline. And I love being creative. This is something I read. Create means, I mean, it's just another way to relate. So when you create, you're trying to relate to the world. You're kind of like, oh, this shit's fucking weird. Am I the only one that feels this? And then sometimes you are. <laughs> sometimes you are the only one that feels this. But sometimes everybody's feeling it. And I think that's when it kicks in nice and lets you know that you're heading the right way. Nature will let you know you're heading the right way when it just flows, you know. Um, but letting go of a, a versus mentality, he and she, because it's, we're all dead meat. We're all dead meat, all from the get-go. And I don't know, maybe my dad dying at age 10 in a car accident so fast and so quick that I just got that lesson drilled into the front of my forehead that, baby, we are dead meat, man. This is a funky, fresh ride, and you better live it all out because who fucking knows? Um, but, yeah, I guess there is sharks out there. That's what I was thinking about. Like, why can't we go get along? Why can't? the versus mentality and see how truly beautiful and a miracle life is. You know, that's the thing about Nirvana. It's a moment that you're like walking in heaven, but you're still, you just see all of it, man. You just see it all. Like, look at that fucking blue sky. And I've been doing that. I went to the park and when I go to the park, I try to clean my mind they do say walking's really good for your brain. And I did get a car note, so I had been driving a lot. And then I was like, I gotta get back into walking, yo. I got some good man sandals. I'll get out there and do some walking. So I did that. I've been meditated for 40 minutes this morning. Because nobody's in the house, so I could do it, you know. And it's quiet. I love it when it's quiet and cold and I can hear the birds outside. And when I start... Really going inside my heart, everything kind of amplifies. Like LSD and drugs and ayahuasca and DMT. I know all this shit, man. I went to one of the druggiest high schools of all time. I was surrounded by young Hunter S. Thompsons by the time I was 13 and 14. 
people were doing acid and drugs and coke and shit man it was fucking wild um but it just always ended up the same place like all that stuff is is it's if you're looking for something externally I think they're all good. Don't get me wrong. You know, uh, I was on a hit of ecstasy and I saw the Almond Brothers, the real Almond Brothers, at Red Rocks in 1996, 95, summer 95, after I graduated from college. I stayed with my buddy Winston Rigsby. Shout out to Winston Rigsby, who was living in Boulder at the time, crashed on his couch. One of his roommates was a female with no leg. I remember that. She had a peg leg. <laughs> and I was bonged out on the couch in 95. Where the fuck were you? I was coming down from a hit of ecstasy after seeing the Almond Brothers melt in Red Rocks. Red Rocks is one of the most fucking coolest, trippiest places, man. It literally looks like Mars. It's, it, it's this red mountain clay Moab has it there's another desert it's like this desert man and the shapes are just in the wind so it's 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 an amphitheater carved into a red mountain one of my favorite things i think i plugged it the last few but i think i already overplayed it but was a song called so many roads by billy strings i don't know who this kid billy strings is but he's a bad motherfucker on the guitar billy strings shout out to you and um, your guitar playing. And So Many Roads. He covers this song called So Many Roads. And I don't know. It might hit you different. I don't know. I get, I get emotional about music. Music, like, there's sometimes, like, I just went down this cool Keith fucking wormhole. And it was just brilliant, you know. It inspires me. I have to say I do love me some YouTube it's nice. 2020 is 2021 is dope. It's doper than the 90s because you got YouTube. You can make shit. Like if you got a laptop, you literally can make. Uh, if you got a MacBook, you can make a feature film. You can uh, put out a podcast, and you can make funky beats. Literally, from a thing that's this like. The 90s, you had to rent some shit. You had to blow a guy to fucking hang out with some dude that gets you somewhere else. I mean, it was just... Now it's literally in your fingertips. I think that's the frustration that everybody's doing it. Um, and there's going to be so much of it. And especially kids love that. That's why I'm not putting too much stock into TikTok and Instagram and Twitter. and that. A lot of that shit is just like a bunch of kids that first got their phones in the eighth grade. So now they're just lighting up all this fucking social media bullshit. I mean, it's good for PR. And back in the day, you had to hire a PR company. Now you could just put out a tweet. Um, so things are shaping up that way. But uh, what was I talking about? Oh, letting go of a, of a versus mentality. I do think pacifism is the way to go. Um, shout out to Mike. Uh, shout out to my buddy. Um, we talked about pacifism. Just peace, you know? Because we're all going to die. That's what I... Like war and anger and the fights and the bullshit. But then there's sharks out there. Meaning, you know, there's people that are built for evil. Well, hopefully they're not, you know. Hopefully they see the light one day. Hopefully we stay in the light. Stay positive. Um, but I got to tell you, um, I think I know my body really well. Right now, in the last three minutes, and now I'm starting to get jittery. Like, I'm, I got to pee so bad. I mean, as you heard, I was just chugging, chugging this homemade moonshine uh cannabis tea and uh but now i gotta peep everybody we're at 43 minutes i'll put some beats on this to rock it out to close to an hour thank you for listening to the cannabis coffee hour we're gonna have more guests we're gonna drink more cannabis smoke more cannabis tour around the world this is just my home base to keep it funky fresh not fake the funk or to be myself if you're if you're like, oh, Rob, you're talking way too much hip-hop slang. It's really fake. Okay, I'll talk like this, you fucking hater. <laughs> I don't know. I'm always battling uh, some inner hater inside, as we all are. But sometimes you got to let that shit go. 
and uh, let it all go and it all comes together. All right. I love you. Peace, love. I'm out. I'm going to pee. <laughs>